Hello everyone, welcome to the editorial analysis of Shankar Ayas Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. And this video is for the editorial analysis of articles for the date 16th of November 2024. So as before moving into the articles discussion, there is just a small announcement to be made. The pre-storming UPC prelim test series of 2025 would be having the admissions open from November 21st of 2024. So interested aspirants are welcome to join the admission process. And also Shankaraya's Academy's initiative called Chakra are open for its admissions which is the current affairs sessions along with offline and online test modes and discussions along with it. So interested aspirants can join the session. So now let us see the topics for discussion. The article titled what we burn is what we pollute from the Indian Express talks about the implications of the pollution problem not only from uh, this place of Delhi but also around the India where it tells the what are the main factors for pollution. Next. Uh, article titled another job scam talks about the scam in the recruitment process especially in public offices and this article is from Indian Express and finally the article titled India needs a globally recognized public policy schools from the Hindu talks about the need for having public policy schools and public policy infra, uh, institutions to enforce more holistic and inclusive understanding of the policy making in India. So without any much further delay let us get into article discussion one by one. So moving on to the article, this article talks about the need for having a public policy school since India being one of the most largest democracies it sometimes lack a very globally recognized public policy school so that it can help in having uh, institutions to train policy makers who can effectively address a lot of socio and economic environmental and political issues for a country like India. So altogether it brings an inclusive and a practical solution or a policy uh, understanding for the unique governance for a country like India. So let us see a main question and in framework for it we will see the rest of the content when it comes to public policy. This is the main question and let us move on to the content. Now what is public policy? According to the Ministry of Personal Public Grievances and Pensions, public policy is a set of decisions and actions taken by the government to address public issues, improve their governance and achieve developmental goals. For example, the national education policy of 2020 can be a uh, clear cut mechanism when it comes to public policy where it addresses a lot of issues regarding the education alone. So what are the four main characteristics of a public policy first it should have a goal through achieving specific goal we can address socio-economic and political objective next is to have for a public policy it should have a legal backing up which requires legal frameworks or regulations uh, regulations for its implementation next is any public policy should be dynamic in nature where for the needs of the society they need to be having different perspectives of political ideologies and priorities and so on and finally is to be inclusive in the process here it involves inputs from various stakeholders like policy makers citizens and civil societies so there is involvement of everyone for a uh, creation of institution like a public policy school now let us see what is public policy institution here according to the niti ayo public policy institutions are entities that can conduct research, analyze po policies and provide knowledge support to the government for effective decision making and governance reforms. So in light of this let us see few challenges and advantages associated with it. So first is having a weak institutional framework here, sometimes uh, shortage of ex experts can affect the institutional mechanism. Next is having a lack of interdisciplinary collaboration. Here policies need to have collaboration from various disciplines like law, economics and technology, science and so on and it can be effectively uh, hindered without the trained professionals. Next, is, next challenge would be reduced global competitiveness. Without trained policy makers, India sometimes struggles to compete on global platforms such as negotiations at the uh, UNFCC during the climate conferences and so on. Next challenge would be being very reliant on bureaucratic expertise. Policies often depend on bureaucratic experience rather than having an evidence based policy or interdisciplinary approaches. For example, in any cases like land accusation law, here evidences are only important more than having a perspective or an opinion. 
Next is being overburdened with the bureaucracy here. A lack of supporting policy professionals are placed on the entire burden on bureaucrats leading to insufficiency and their burnout also. Here for example, in 2019, a study almost revealed that 65% of IAS officers spend their significant time on uh, clerical tasks uh, leaving little room for more strategic policy making and final challenge would be overburdening the bureaucracy. A lack of supporting the policy professionals places the entire burden on the bureaucrats. Now let us move on to the significance or advantages of having a public policy school. First is having a build, built up skilled policy professionals. Of course, they can train the future policy makers, administrators and help them to analyze, design, implement and evaluate policies effectively. For example, Indian School of Public Policy trains professionals to policy analysis and economic planning and public finances. Next is to promoting evidence-based decision making. Here, they emphasize on uh, research-driven approaches ensuring the policies are based on credible data and analysis. For example, National Law School of Indian University encourages these policy research uh, reforms to inform the judicial reforms and regulatory policies. Next is uh, having an interdisciplinary approach here, encouraging the public policy schools to integrate knowledge from economics, law, political science and environmental studies to design holistic policies. For example, Takshila institution focuses on multidisciplinary education. Next is policy innovation and having reforms here. It helps students to encourage and bring in creative solutions for presenting in national and international level for many global challenges. And finally, the last two advantages would be aligning policies with the national developmental goals and having a policy evaluation and advocacy for it. Here, through aligning the policies with the national developmental goals, it helps to contributing to flagship programs as they ensure policies align with the socio-economic priorities for a country like India. For example, collaboration between public policy schools and Skill India mission has helped to design training modules and finally to have a policy evaluation and advocacy here public policy school contribute to the evaluation of the existing policies and also advocate for reforms based on their findings the central policy research collaborates with the public policy schools to assess programs like the swachh bharat abhiyan for example Moving on to the next article, the Uttar Pradesh job scam recently has highlighted corruption in the recruitment exams where nepotism and irregularities have been eroding the public trust here. The Uttar Pradesh job scam refers to alleged irregularities in recruitment exams conducted for the administrative positions in Uttar Pradesh Assembly and Legislative Council during 2020-21. So, the Allahabad High Court termed the process a recruitment scam and ordered a CBI probe. So, however, the Supreme Court has stayed the probe with further hearings and scheduled for January 2025. So, in light of this article, let us see a main question which implements on the ethical backing of recruitment process. This is the main question and let's move on to the article's discussion on ethical violations. First, let us see what are the constitutional violations according to this topic. So, right to equality that is article 14 has been violated. This article ensures opportunities for all citizens. Here, nepotism and require, uh, recruitment have violated this fundamental right by prioritizing connections over merits. Next is having equality of opportunity in public employment that is article 16. It guarantees equal access to government jobs without discrimination. Here, manipulation in the recruitment process have uh, disobeyed this provision. Next article violation would be article 19 sub clause 1 sub clause G. Here it talks about right to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation, trade or businesses of all citizens. Next is the directive principle of state policy under article 39. It directs the state to ensure that resources including employment and opportunities are dis, uh, distributed to serve the common good. And finally, the fundamental duty that is Article 51A which imposes a duty on citizens including public officials to act with integrity and hold the constitution. Here, ultimately this has been violated. So, now let us move on to ethical violations. We have seen the constitutional violations, now we will move on to ethical violations. 
first is conflict of interest here involvement of officials relatives and private firms with have vested their interest created ethical conflicts so decisions were influenced by personal relationships rather than having a public interest or public opinion next is violation of the integrity public administrators have failed to maintain honesty and fairness in the recruitment process favoring relatives of officials and private firms have undermined the trust in the government institutions next is the abuse of authority here officials have misused the positions to influence the selection process for personal or familial gain authority was exploited to bypass merit based hiring process next is having a partiality discrimination in a favor of candidates with connections have compromised the principle of neutrality and fairness so equal opportunities for all candidates were denied and finally breach of public trust here nepotism and ma manipulation have eroded the trust on the citizens which are placed in their public institutions here aspirants belief in a fair and transparent system was deeply shaken next is having a lack of accountability here officials involved in the scam avoided accountability due to systematic delays and lack of effective oversight so thus failure to adhering to established procedures undermine public confidences next is compromising on the meritocracy here the practice of favoritism have violated the ethical principle of selecting the most deserving and qualified candidates it disregarded years of effort and preparation by many genuine aspirants next is having a neglect of professional responsibility here administrators ignore their duty to act in the best interest of the society and uphold constitutional values ethical guidelines for public services were all violated and finally to have the debate on subjectivity versus objectivity here the absence of objective standards for selection led to widespread corruption and a loss of integrity in the system as a whole so in a broader ethical implications few violations happened here demoralization of youth is one of the major violation aspirants faith in hard work and meritocracy is, is replaced with despair next is undermining governance here widespread corruption in recruitment process damages the credibility of the public institution and the interest on a whole and finally leading to erosion of equality such scams perpetuate inequality giving undue advantage to connected individuals in the expense of deserving candidates now let us look into few legal backing up to prevent such scams first is the prevention corruption prevention of corruption act of 1988 here it provides penalties for public officials engaging in corrupt practices like favoritism and bribery next is penal indian penal code of 1860 section 409 and 420 here it penalizes criminal breach of trust and cheating in the recruitment process next is the whistleblower protection act of 2014 it safeguards individuals from exposing corruption on irregularities in public offices next is right to information act of 2005 it ensures transparency in government recruitment process by making data as uh, accessible to the public and it is one of the important act next is central vigilance commission that is the cvc here it monitors and investigates corruption cases in central government institutions here states have similar anti corruption bodies and finally having a judicial oversight here courts can intervene in the cases of recruitment malpractices as seen in the allahabad high court case that a directive for a cbi probe so moving on to the article air pollution in india is such a grave issue with far reaching consequences for health economy as well as the environment in our recent few videos we would have seen factual analysis about the delhi air pollution the recess causes and other risks associated with it so in this article we'd be seeing a more holistic understanding of the pollution in this article there have been brought findings from the indian ocean experiment where they reveal that primary sources of pollution in india are burning biomass and fossil fuels so even though they have known the causes for decades a lack of decisive action has increased the problem thus making it very critical challenge for the sustainable development so let us see this main question and move on to the later part of the article now first let us see what are the sources of air pollution in india first is burning of 
biomass here under household practices cooking and heating with agricultural residues firewood and dung cakes contribute almost 48 percentage of particular matter 2.5 in emissions next is this double burning seasonal agricultural residue burning adds up to 6.5 percentage to the pm2 0.5 emissions especially in the northern states for example punjab and haryana during the winter months next is the industrial and power sector emissions here coal combustion in industries and power plants accounts for almost 37 percentage of pm 2.5 emissions so uh, lax enforcement of pollution control measures have increased the problem lax enforcement is nothing but a very uh, weak implementation of policy controls Next is the transport sector here. Fossil fuels reliance in urban transport contributes almost 7 percentage of the particulate emissions. For example, Delhi vehicular pollution during the peak traffic hours. Next is the urban waste management here. Open burning of garbage releases particulate matter 10 and harmful toxins into the air. For example, poor waste aggression practices in urban areas. Next is construction and road dust here. Urban expansion and unregulated construction activities can increase the particulate, particulate uh, pollution. And finally, the geographical challenge here. For a country like India, the Indo-Gangetic Plains experience stagnant air circulation trapping the pollutants from agriculture, industry and vehicles. Looking into the health impacts of air pollution, first is the respiratory diseases, increased asthma and bronchitis cases due to smoke, sorry, smog and PM 2.5 uh, exposure have increased the disease rate. Your children near industrial areas have shown uh, reduced lung development. Next is cardiovascular and neurological issues, higher rate of heart attacks and cognitive discipline uh, decline in polluted cities like Kanpur have shown rates. Next is having cancer risks, here elevated lung cancer rates even among non-smokers in industrial hubs like Dhanbad have increased the uh, rate of disease. When it comes to the children's health especially and the impact on children, there are higher rates of preterm births and severe respiratory issues in regions like Punjab during stubble burning seasons. And also not just children but other vulnerable groups like the elderly and people with pre-existing conditions. Here senior citizens in heavily populated urban areas like Kolkata report higher mortality due to cardiovascular diseases. And pre-existing conditions like diabetics and asthma patients in cities with frequent construction dust for example Mumbai report worsening symptoms. And looking into the global impact here, World Health Organization links almost 7 million of annual deaths globally to air pollution with India as a hotspot. Now let us see few sustainable solutions to tackle this air pollution. Now let us look into the initiatives to address air pollution. First is the national policies and program. Under this, there is national clean air program. The objective is to reduce the particulate matter PM 2.5 and PM 2. Point, sorry PM 10 levels by 20 to 30 percentage by 2024 and the baseline year is 2017. Here it focuses on 131 non-attainment city that is the cities where it, there is not meeting of air quality standards. Next is the national air quality index. The central Pollution Control Board that is the CPCB have released it from 2014 as a part of Swachh Bharat mission. It has standardized uh, instrument for measuring air pollution and is an indicator of human health. Next program would be National Ambient Air Quality standards here it sets permissible pollution levels for various pollutants that is pm 2.5 pm 2, uh, 10 nitro oxide etc here it ensures environmental standards are monitorized and enforced and finally is the air prevention and control of pollution act in 1981 here it is a framework for regulating emissions from industries and vehicles next is uh, looking into transport sector reforms here there is implementation of the Bharat stage Six, that is BS6 norms in nationwide. It promotes electrical vehicles through the FAME scheme and invest in EV charging infrastructures. Here there is strict enforcement on the vehicle scrappage policies. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give a like, comment and a share and further not to miss any other content, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.